Hello everyone! Thank you for coming back to my channel. Today's workout is going to be a little bit different. We are going to practice different types of kits in Taekwondo. But first, we are going to practice with different hopping and skipping and jumping techniques. So it's a good way to practice. As you can see, I'm practicing different types of skippings and hopping. These are very good to practice before doing any kind of leg workout. It is very important to warm up and stretch a little bit before any type of workout, especially when we are practicing footing. So if you haven't done any workout before with me, then I suggest that you check out my warm-up session for Taekwondo. Or if you feel like you're warmed up enough, then let's do the skipping session together. Let's do some jumping jacks first. When you're doing the jumping jacks, it's important to keep the pace and make sure that you're breathing well. And now let's do some burpees. The way I'm doing the burpees is that I'm doing a push-up and then I'm doing two up checkies. Let's see it from the side. So we jump up, do a small push-up, then do two up checkies. Now we are going to do some parallel leg techniques. So first, get into the Narani Chumli Sagi position, which is a parallel ready stance. And we are going to do up jaggy front kicks first. This is a very, very good technique to make sure that your balance is improving and your legs are getting stronger. From this stance, you can do up jaggies and you can do drop jaggy jet side kicks. Now we are going to do some balancing techniques again. And we are focusing on the up jaggy, which is the front kick. Use the up kunchi part of your foot. Bend your toes and your knees between. You can either flex your foot or you can point it when you are practicing this kick. It's better to flex it because that's the usual up jaggy. But if you prefer to do pointed kicks, that's also good. As you can see, you can go to the natural section, which is the lower part of the body. It can go to the pelvis area while the little bit higher section, the middle section called kaunde, uh, kicks are going to the middle section so they can go into the stomach or the chest, while the lower section can go into the lower pelvis area. These kicks can be really tricky to practice, so first practice them very slow and then you can it faster a little bit later when you know how to put them in shape. Your hips should be squared when you're performing these kicks and don't forget to breathe and keep your guard up at all times. If you happen to have a punching bag, then use it to practice your kicks, especially the up chuggies that now we were practicing. So once you can do this technique slowly, then you will be able to do them more quickly. Make sure that your kicks are accurate and you are not just kicking everywhere. You have to make sure that you are kicking to the right place and that your technique is very, very concentrated. As a martial artist, you have to be punctual and you have to be accurate at all times. You can always practice a little bit of shadow boxing if you like to do that kind of stuff. It's a good way to improve your skills. Now let's continue the up chuggy technique again and let's kick a little bit higher now. This section is called Nopunde, which is the high section. This kick is still the actually I'm showing this to you from both the left side, the right side, and the side so you can see the difference. You can either kick with your up country or with your heel, as you can see here. Make sure that you stretch enough if you do this kind of techniques because kicking with your heel, especially this high up, would be dangerous. Now let's continue the techniques with a dolio chedi. Flex your foot and we are going to do a low section kick and a mid 
mid section okay? so then the junda and then the funda hips make sure that your hips are squared when you're doing the up shaggy but then you are doing the dolio you have to move your hips a little bit towards your opponent otherwise you are not going to be able to perform this trick as it should be performed so you should put your weight on the pivoting foot and then turn the body immediately after folding the knee and as the knee stretches make the kicking foot circle horizontally so that the fore sole may keep the target the foot back can also be used as a kicking part of course the supporting leg stretches its ankle and need to have the fore sole pivot the body easily Unlike the upchagi or the upchagi, the kicking foot does not make a straight line back. The foot is raised and then begins to move in a circle. After a hard training of doya chagi, you will be able to make a pounding kick from above the target at the time of the kick. When you are kicking, it's a good thing to stop the leg at the time of the kicking from the target without making a follow through. Then, when you can do that, you can do the follow through technique. It's very important to practice with both legs, so make sure that when you practice the dolio chagi with the right leg, then you practice it with the left leg as well. Make sure that you're training your body to be even more symmetrical. Many times one of our legs is better at kicking than the other. Our goal is to make both legs the same. Even though it's going to be very hard, I urge you to do that. Now let's see the yop chagi. Chagi is a side kick. When you are performing this kick, you should lift up the kicking leg, hold the knee, and then stretch the fold of the knee as you turn the body in the opposite direction to the target and kick the target with the back sole of your foot. At the moment of the kick, the base of the kicking leg twists at the pelvis in a manner of turning over and the head is raised to keep the eye fixed at the target very important to turn your head first whenever you are doing a kick. After the kick, the kicking leg will be thrown back to the original position or where it is intended to be placed for the next moves. Make sure that the back sole can keep the target powerfully. The target is determined according to the opponent's position. So, if the opponent is facing the front, the target will be the face or the solar plexus. If the opponent stands sideways, then the target will be the flank or the side chin. At the moment of a yokchagi, the upper body should not be left falling in the direction opposite to the target. The upper part of the body must be raised so that the entire body may form a wide lateral shape, enabling the weight to be converted into an Italian force of kick. Ayakchagi applies the back sole of the foot blade in attacking and they must move on a straight line from the starting point to the target. The target is standing in front of you. So you want to move forward to the target. It's good to practice with a punching bag both the dolio and the yokchagi techniques. This way you can feel the distance a little bit better and you actually have a target to kick. If you have a punching bag, you can practice the kicks with different intensity and you can practice how far they should should be. You can kick the bag a little bit more harder each time, but you can also just try to touch it and be more accurate. The last kick for today is the back kick, which is the bridge shaggy. 
In this kick you should turn your body away from the target and push the back leg straight toward the target, hitting it with the heel while watching over your shoulder. The turning motion helps to give this kick a lot of power, but without proper care you can spin out and lose your balance when using this step. Make sure that you are practicing every kick in the right way and I hope you enjoyed this class. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Taekwondo videos. Click here to learn more techniques and take more classes with me.